Hello everyone! Hello! Welcome back to our daily creative challenges for Adobe Illustrator. My name is Andrew Hochrattle. You can just call me Hoch, H-O-C-H. It's very German and very aggressive when you go Hochrattle. Um, I am your host and guide over the next uh, three or four days that we have left. Uh, we've been on Design Safari for the last few uh, weeks, a little bit this week, a little bit last week. Uh, and it's great to see friends. Hello, Valder, every day. Uh, Anna, Valentine, Lindsay, I think we saw Lennon here. Um, a whole bunch of friends from New Zealand and Australia. It's great to see you all. Um, it's always a blessing to see things down under. Um, hopefully, I am not upside down for you. I think, I think that we're good. Um, just flip horizontal. Uh, hello, Steve. Hello. Uh, nice to see you all. Uh, Fa Faisal, Colleen. Man, everybody's in chat. Uh, my chat's over there. So if you see me look to the side, you guys are all hanging out over that way. Uh, very, very excited for today. We will be talking about gradients. Uh, this is your first time and you're looking to learn Illustrator or you're tuning in after the fact because you searched how to make gradients. Uh, welcome, this is the video. Now, if you're watching this video right now or if you're watching this video after the fact, there's a great place for you to hop in and get connected with other designers and other people that are doing these challenges as well. All you have to do is go right up here to bit.ly slash discord. Um, I need a little song for that. Uh, hello, Barbara from Denver. Uh, go up here, bit.ly slash AI discord. Over in the discord, there are a bunch of people talking. There are people dropping in their works. Um, today, we had yesterday, sorry, we talked about scatter brushes. And we worked a lot with these leaves. We worked a lot with mud, uh, some paw prints. Um, and people have been posting all of their super fun. Oh, look at that. Some giraffes. Uh, all of their super fun work in here. We've been giving feedback. We have some amazing, amazing mentors in here. Kathleen, Rocky, and Tim and myself are in there giving you guys feedback, um, trying to help you level up your design game. That's really what we're here for. Now, what I like to say when we're working and when we're going into an illustrator with these challenges is there is no right way, there is no wrong way to do any of the things. I am showing you one of the ways uh, or maybe giving you an overview of the tool so that you can then take it and apply it in any way. Uh, I like to think of creativity as a creative pantry, right? And on this stream, we're just learning the ingredients. We're learning how to use coriander, uh, which would be the gradient tool or uh, the ingredients, and then you can put them together however you like and make some kind of dish. Uh, sometimes the dish may not be the best or taste awesome, but you gave it a shot and you learned something along the way. So today we're going to be learning about gradients. Um, if you've missed any of our daily creative challenges, you can go back and watch those replays by going over here to behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. This also is where you can get the source files for all of our challenges each day. Um, We've done, so far, uh, simple shapes. We built animals out of simple shapes. We worked with type on a path, made some fun little badges. We worked with selections and using the shape builder tool. We worked with blends. This was one of my favorites. Um, this is something that people are watching. People are still posting. Blends is super, super fun. So go watch that. That one's my favorite. Um, scatter brushes was yesterday, which was fun. Um, got a little crazy, but we had some fun. And then today we're talking about gradients. Now, if you are going to post your work on Behance, you can also come over here and post using hashtag AI challenge. And by using this hashtag AI challenge, you will be able to post your work so we can see it. Um, Lorena, we saw this in Discord using uh, blends. You can see, let's go ahead and open this up. We talked about blends. She's using a blend here inside these letters to create that kind of uh, zebra pattern. And then another blend to create this shadow. Uh, this is a kind of gradient. We'll be working with gradients today, um, but the blends do really great with letters to create that kind of dimension. Um, I love this by Tiana. Great job, this cute little fox. Uh, again, working with simple shapes, this nose is probably just circles that have been squashed a little bit um, and have had a point added to them. So super fun. Uh, yes, light mode. Eric, everything that I do is in light mode, um, except when I switch back and forth between Photoshop. Photoshop's in dark mode, Illustrator's in light mode. I don't know why uh, I've gotten put on blast for it before. So uh, let's hop back and talk a little bit about what we're doing today. 
We are going over gradients today. Um, I'm very excited and we have about 20 minutes together. So we're going to try to power through some stuff. We're going to try to make a metal sign. And I know that the challenge talked about making signage. So we're going to make some signage, but then we're going to level up and try to do a gold coin. Uh, coins are really fun to do with gradients. I'm going to show you how to do directional gradients, radio gradients, and some freeform gradients. And let's go ahead. Uh, if you haven't joined us, we've been going on Design Safari. Let's go ahead on Design Safari. And today, as I promised, ASMR intro. Oh my goodness. Look at the things. Look at that. Oh. oh no. All right, that's all I got. <laughs> I thought that'd be fun. Uh, little ASMR for you guys there. Sorry, I'm like probably super, super loud right now. Um, but today we are talking about gradients. I thought it'd be fun to do some ASMR. I promised it yesterday, so I figured why not? Uh, our regular music is going to come back tomorrow um, and it'll be really fun. Uh, yes, Sienna, we try to get creative. Again, if you haven't streamed, if you haven't tuned in and you're like, this guy's crazy. Um, yeah, true. Um, I like to do infotainment, so a little bit of information, a little bit of entertainment, and hopefully you all remember the lessons we talk about. Now, again, we were doing ASMR to be very quiet, and I think we've done this a couple other days. We're going to invite a guest on our design safari again, so let's go ahead and let's see if we can get really quiet. Let's see if he'll come out again. <gasps> there he is. We got a new friend. Um, this is our gecko friend. This is our chameleon friend. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. That was very offensive. Um, please don't cancel me. This is our um, chameleon friend, and we are going to look at him because in nature, I think that chameleons are the greatest example of um, gradients. Uh, they can adapt to what they're on, and they can change and shift form, and he is actually doing what we would call a freeform gradient. Uh, well, we'll look at this at the end of our lesson today, but I wanted to show him so that hopefully in your mind, as you work with a freeform gradient tool, you can think about it like a chameleon. Uh, there are little pieces um, and there are little gradations between colors that are going back and forth. Um, so let's hop into Illustrator and take a look at some directional and radial gradients. And keep in mind our friend right here um, when we get to freeform gradients. So uh, if you haven't already, hop on over to Behance, grab our source file. Um, we don't really need the source file today, but I always appreciate it when you grab it. So let's go ahead and jump into Adobe Illustrator and talk through what our challenge is for the day. Uh, Camillo the Chameleon, I love that. Yes, Camillo the Chameleon. So today our challenge, design signage using blend modes and gradients. When you're finished with your design, try mocking it up. Um, it sounds simple enough. And again, if you are having challenge, I always try to give you some encouragement. So this is the sign that you have been looking for. Um, and if you like, as always, you can follow me on Behance or even Instagram at justhawk.co, H-O-C-H-D-O-T-C-O. -O. Um, I don't have any time for punctuation in my life. So we're going to hop right in and uh, make it very, very simple and quick. Now, with gradients, we want to um, start with one color and end with another color. We've actually looked at this concept a lot when we worked in Illustrators. We're usually starting somewhere and ending somewhere because it's mathematically based. So with gradients, we're starting at one color instead of a location and transitioning to another color. So if we think about a sign, right, it's fairly simple. It's just going to be a rectangle and we'll be around it. So we'll grab the rectangle tool here, or we can hit M, and we're going to bring this rectangle... Um, about there, why not? I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit so we can see it. 
I'm going to round these corners and to round corners, all you have to do is select that shape and then you can uh, select the shape and it will pull up these little nodes in the corners and we will zoom it in just a little bit. There we go. All right. So we got a little bit of rounded corner and what I'm going to do is I am going to select this shape and I am going to uh, add a gradient on it. Sorry, is there an echo, Eric says. Um, I'm not sure what that's coming from. I don't have the audio. So if there is an echo, uh, let me know and I'll try to fix it up for you. All right, so we're gonna select this shape and then we're gonna come over here and select the gradient tool. You can also do this by just hitting G and then clicking on the shape. Uh, now, these are some super fun, uh, and I think that this is a newer feature, using these nodes to be able to control our gradient. So if you think about a metal sign, right, usually it has a kind of shimmer to it. And if you think about that in the context of, if you think about that in the context of um, translating it to a digital realm, it's very, very easy to be able to uh, pick out colors. So it's light, then dark, then light, then dark. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to come over here into my gradient options uh, panel. And I'm going to change this to be at a 45 degree angle. I want it to have kind of that harsh angle. And what we're going to do is we're basically saying instead of starting this black here and ending this white here, we want to put it at a 45 degree angle across from each other. So now this is a 45 degree angle. Um, you can see with our gradient, and if you want to, you can actually grab, oh, where is it? This one, there we go. You can grab this node and start to turn, and you'll see your gradient start to turn in a different direction. So I want it to just be at a 45 degree angle. Um, very easy, very simple. Now, we don't want this to be black to white. We want it in gradations of kind of silvers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here, and in our gradient panel, we can just start adding in. Uh, other colors. So if you click on this line, we're saying it starts here and ends here. But if we put another midpoint, uh, just like if you're getting directions for something and you add a stop, that's what it's saying. It's starting at white and we are adding a stop at a little bit of a darker gray. Then we're going to add another stop all the way over at this kind of semi dark gray. And then instead of going to black, we want it to come back up with a little bit lighter. So I technically like to go from light to dark to light to dark, and you can see that we're starting to get that metallic kind of look, right? This is where this is what we want to look for a metallic sign. This gray is a little dark for me. And what's great is you can come in here and select these nodes, just click on them, and then you can change that to a different gray. Now, if you don't want to work in the gradients panel, you can actually come over here and select the nodes here. You can drag them closer and further away from each other to really get that perfect kind of shine and shimmer. That feels just about right for me for a metal sign. Uh, and what I like to do to create almost an edge is to stack gradients. And stacking gradients just basically makes it look like the light is hitting it differently. So I'm going to make a copy using Command-C. I'm going to paste in place using Command-Shift-V. And I'm going to scale this down just a little bit. And I just hit S to grab the scale tool, and I'm just clicking and dragging in. Now you can see it looks pretty much the same because that gradient is still has the same start and end points. It's shrunk down a little bit, but all the colors are the same. What I like to do is I'll take this and kind of cheat a little bit. I'll hit R to rotate and rotate it 180 degrees. And now you can see we have this nice little gradation and it looks like a metal sign that maybe has a little uh, rim around it, right? Um, now, this is great, and this is called a, a directional gradient, right? We're starting in one place, going to another place. Now, let's do one more directional gradient, and this is a great way to show dimension with gradients, is I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. I'm going to pull down right here. I'm just going to line these up by selecting both and then aligning to center. And then I'm going to reset this gradient, so I want it to be at exactly zero degrees. And by doing that at zero degrees, you can see, we can right click here, arrange and send it back. You can see that it's given us this shine and shimmer that looks like it's dark and then, or sorry, it looks like it has a highlight and a shadow. And that's what we want for a realistic approach. Um, if we zoom out, this starts to look a little bit like a mirror or it looks like a metallic sign, right? That we're just working with these um, different shapes. Um, so 
What's really great about working with gradients is we can actually start to mess around with some different shapes. And when you're working with something that is rectangular or square, a lot of times it's easier to work with a directional gradient. But we're going to make a sign that's oval. Um, and let's say maybe this isn't a sign. Maybe this is the step up. And the step up is going to be a gold coin. Uh, so I'm going to grab our badge that we worked on um, on Tuesday of last week. And if you don't have a badge, if you don't have the logo for one of those challenges, you can either go back to that challenge, um, do that challenge and learn something in the process, or you can make a coin um, by just using a circle and stacking some circles or putting some type on a circle, um, because really all it is is having an oval or a circle to create this. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go ahead and just make this all one shape, um, just for kicks and giggles. And I am going to make a back. So usually coins have a backing to them, and it looks like something is raised off of them. So we're going to play with gradients to create the illusion that the light is hitting these different things differently um, to make that metallic kind of sign or coin look. So I'm just hitting L to grab the ellipse tool, and I'm clicking in the center there and dragging this out so that it is going to be under um, where this is. I actually can right click, send to back, arrange, send to back. I'm going to make this pink just so we can see. So now again, it's sitting behind those shapes, creating something a little bit interesting. Um, and I'm going to select this uh, oval shape. And this is where we start to get into a radio gradient. So I'm going to click again on the gradient tool, which is G and click on the shape that I want to create a gradient with. And now we have the same gradient that we've worked with over here. It's going to keep those settings. Um, but what we want to do is come up here or in our gradient panel and click on this middle one. Uh, and that is a radio gradient. And as you can see, it's switching from going from one direction to the other to starting from the center and going outward. Um, I don't necessarily want all of these points in here. I actually just want it to look like there's a highlight in the middle and then maybe a low light or shadow on the outside. And I want to play with some uh, kind of yellow colors. So I'm going to have this selected. Um, if I select this node, I can actually come right over here into our color selection panel. And I'm going to select um, a very bright kind of yellow. I actually want it to be more of a gold. There we go. It feels golden. And I want the highlight to be in the middle and the shadow to be in the outside. And so because we're starting here and ending here um, on our way out, I'm going to click on this node for this color. And I'm going to make this a little bit of a darker yellow. All right, those colors are um, what some people might describe as awful. So let's go ahead and make these a little more yellow. Uh, I did a bad job at picking those colors. There we go. That feels more coiny, coinish. Um, and grabbing this little node right in the middle is going to slide how much of that shine or how much the gradation happens. Uh, if you select one of these colors, you can pull it in to be a little bit tighter, um, which is not what we want. We want a very kind of loose gradation. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter of a yellow. Let's try to go more vibrant. Nope. Let's go ahead and just make that more. We're having trouble with these colors, guys. Uh, we are having some trouble with our color selections. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to make it all the same color. Come over here and just pull this down. Oh my goodness. Wow. Now we have a coin. Uh, it's looking great. And now I love it. Cool. So now we have uh, the yeah, slight little echo. Uh, so now with the radio grain, it's starting in the middle, expanding to the outside. And what I want to do actually is now that we have the shine in the middle, I want to create a, a gradient on these edges, but I'm actually going to make it a, a directional gradient. So if I click on directional gradient, you'll see that it's keeping this yellow to a dark yellow. And I'm going to put this at a 45 degree angle just so the angle is a little bit different. Uh, and you can see it's it's getting a little bit wonky for me, um, but it will get less wonky if we change these colors ever so slightly. So this is helpful to uh, take the colors that you have, make them a little bit darker, make them a little bit lighter. Um, again, we can grab the gradient tool. Boop. There we go. Uh, and start to play around with these colors. Uh, let's go a little bit darker down here and a little bit darker down here there we go so it looks like it's maybe a little uh like pushed into that coin so playing with those gradients 
And we're gonna apply that same gradient to the outside to give it a little bit of dimension. So now we've got kind of this coin look, which is really fun. Um, and that would be an example of a radial gradient, right? We start in the middle and expand out. Radial gradients are really great for creating uh, spheres, for creating things that look like they have a shine in the middle. And again, if we select this, grab the gradient tool, there it is. Uh, you see the actual radial on uh, these little uh, perforated kind of line. We can grab up here and pull it in so it's more like an oval. Or we can pull on this side to make it more or less on that shape. So we got a little bit of a coin shape there playing with some directional gradients and the radial gradient in the middle. All right, we got a five minutes, so I'm going to show you guys real quick um, what a freeform gradient is. I'm just going to make a copy of this. And a freeform gradient, we're going to select this back. And uh, radial starts in the middle, goes out. Directional starts in one place, ends in another. Freeform gradient is like the dancer that is just like, I'm going to move my body however I want. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to click here on the third option, which is the freeform gradient. And it's going to give us all these little dots. And just like a chameleon, um, we are starting with one color. So let's make this red. And we're starting with one color and saying, hey, we want this color to be this much. We want it to be this much. And it's starting to point... Uh, from the edge of the shape into where it kind of stops and disperses. And so you'll see as we start to change these, maybe this is a purple over here. Maybe this over here becomes a little light brown. Actually, let's do, yeah, that yellow looks fun. Let's do a nice little yellow. You'll see that it's mixing and gradiating these colors. Um, the gradient that's happening on here, I'm actually just going to make white so it isn't super confusing. Uh, but with this selected, again, we click on the freeform gradient and each of these dots represents a color um, you can get real crazy with this make all kinds of color wheels and if you want to add a color like down here it's kind of just getting uh, dark we can click here and add in another color and it's going to add another node so i think we need some green um, and you can drag this around you can see that it's blending and mixing with these colors as you drag it around um, kind of fun uh, oh there is a little black spot i don't want that so let's, you can select it and just delete it. There we go. Now we got a cool little color wheel going. You can select these, again, dragging these nodes in and out to make more or less of that color. And this is a really great way to make very crazy, uh, intense gradients. As you can see, this isn't necessarily signage, but it's something that's very fun working with gradients. So working with gradients, you can do all kinds of stuff. We could put, uh, actually, let's do it. Let's go ahead and put our friend Milo on this sign just to feel like we have actually accomplished the uh, challenge <laughs> that I said we're doing. Uh, there we go. Milo's on a sign. And as you can see, that gradient behind him makes it look like it's metal, like it's printed on mellow, gives it a little bit of shine. This is a directional gradient again. On this other side, this is a coin with our friend Milo using a radial gradient to show the highlight in the middle getting out to the edge. Gives it a little bit more of a sphere or a little bit of more of a highlight in the center. And then moving on, this is what we would call a freeform gradient. Freeform gradients are great for showing lots of colors. Think of a chameleon with a freeform gradient. So. For your challenge, I want you uh, to play with all three of these if you like, or you can just pick one. I definitely want to see someone do a chameleon using the freeform gradient because I think it would be gorgeous. Um, I know a couple people have actually made chameleons for our challenge when we made animals. So use that chameleon, fill it with the freeform gradient, and play around. Uh, this is a great tool to really mess around with. There's no wrong answers. You can make some really interesting stuff. Uh, and I hope, like our lesson with the blends, I hope that I see some really crazy stuff. Um, I saw some people get in and just say, hey, I'm trying to like break Illustrator. And that's always what I want. Uh, I want you guys to do your best to break the program. Uh, see how far you can push it, experiment with new things, discover and learn all on your own, hopefully with me as your guide, because I love doing that. Uh, again, if you have not joined our discord hop into our discord at bit.ly slash ai discord i'll be hopping over there right after this to take a look at some of the work that's coming in and answer any questions michelle um, if you missed out hop on over into discord say hi with us 
Um, and yes, the mesh tool, Joshua, I think that we might touch on it. Um, we will see. We have all kinds of fun challenges coming up. I believe we're talking about typography. We're going to talk about exporting, um, which is a requested topic. We're going to talk about how to export multiple assets at the same time through different artboards in different file formats. So hopefully increase your efficiency, which is something that Illustrator has been focused on this year, making things faster and more easy for us to use as creatives. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I will see you all again, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come hang out and I will leave you with some ASMR.